Hello, fellow literati, and welcome to In the Dark, the show where my cat has seen something out in the in the midnight dark. Hey, Gracie. Um, what did I say? Hey, hello, fellow literati, welcome to In the Dark, uh, the internet's most laid-back literature show. Gracie. Uh, I'm Nikita. This is In the Dark, the internet's most laid-back literature show. I think I've said that three times already. Uh, but welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're laid back. Uh, today's video uh, is inspired by uh, a question uh, from Kratos223. Uh, and I'll read the question. It's actually a very... Well, let me read the question. Um, for the next video, may I request talking about some literary works you would personally recommend to people who are interested in developing their literature background? Um, <clears throat> and then it goes on. Some works that uh, I find fundamental and worth appreciating based on my experiences and background as an enthusiast. Uh, and he says uh, that he would like to see uh, examples from the most basic of works, uh, branching into some more esoteric examples of poems, novels, and the authors themselves. Um, and th that's actually a really, that's a fantastic question. Look, Gracie's here. She's in every episode. She's a recurring character. Gracie, <laughs> hello. Oh, she loves literature. Okay, off you go. <laughs> um, this is a great question. <clears throat> um, and there's actually so much to address here that I'm not gonna be able to answer it. She's eating again. Okay, guys, she eats in every episode, even though each episode is filmed like, <laughs> within 20 minutes of each other. She's doing it on purpose. She's just trying to spite me. Wow, this is not laid back at all, man. Um, but yeah, so this uh, there's actually a lot here in this question. Um, so I'm gonna break it down. In my response to your comment, I said it would be two videos. Um, but as I was breaking it down, I realized that it's gonna be four videos, actually. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, the, the reason for that is because I think there's multiple parts to, to this question. And I think that's the best way to answer it, like, in depth. Um, you know, short of making, like, an hour-long video. Uh, which um, it basically will be, but it'll be just uh, in four parts over four days. So hopefully you don't mind that. Uh, stay tuned because the next four days, or well, the next three days after this video, um, will be dedicated to this question, essentially, different parts of it. Um, but I thought I would start with kind of what I think is your the central part of your question uh, in terms of de developing your foundation in literature, uh, which, as you will know from the title of this video, uh, that's what this video is about. Um, and just uh, for reference, the next videos will be... Uh, uh, my favorite literary books that I would recommend, which uh, you kind of reference, so things I, I find worth appreciating. Um, then I'm going to make a video talking about just like books that aren't my favorites, but that are like generally esteemed, um, which kind of tie into developing a literature background, because this will be like how to broadly speaking uh, develop an understanding and like kind of like a broad um, foundation, uh, as, the, <laughs> as the word implies. Um, whereas that one will be talking about books uh, specifically. And once those videos are up, I think I'll, I'll link them here. So if you're coming, you know, in a couple days, just uh, be, be clicking on those links uh, if that's interesting to you. Um, yeah, so the third video will be kind of like canonical work. So books that are worth reading uh, not all of them are books that I've read, but it's just like books from 
um, from uh, kind of like I don't know where I was going with that, but they're books that are like universally uh, acclaimed as as basically like must reads that um, you know if you want to kind of have a broad understanding of, of Western literature, um, those are the books. Uh, and then the fourth topic, I believe, was uh, Gracie. So the fourth video will be about Gracie and how cute she is. Gracie, leave it alone. <laughs> um, the fourth video, let me take a quick look. Uh, what, what's it about over here? Um, uh, my 12 favorite poems. Okay, so that's kind of like, because you say, uh, Poems, novels, and authors. Um, so, in, in terms of authors, like you can just look into um, the ones referenced in, in, in all of these videos. Um, but I, I'll make two separate videos: one for uh, books and one for poems. Uh, okay, so that's enough uh, <laughs> enough talking about that. Uh, let's get into developing a foundation in literature. Um, there's six steps. Again, as uh, the title will probably say. Uh, there's kind of six steps I would recommend uh, for developing a foundation in literature. The first step is, uh, of course, Gracie, who really knew in literature. <laughs> she looks so mad. <laughs> she just wants to sit here. Um, okay, jokes aside, gotta, gotta chill a little bit, get a bit more laid back. Um, Okay, so the, the first of the six steps um, is invest in literature anthologies. Uh, and anthologies, if you're not uh, familiar, although I think most people know, but just for the sake of uh, being clear, uh, an anthology is basically like a big book of the most famous of something. So a poetry anthology would have a bunch of really famous poems based around a given uh, topic or time period and so on. Um, and I've seen online people saying like, oh, if you don't study literature, um, like in school, then anthologies are a waste, uh, which I think is just ridiculous. I, I don't really understand the logic for that at all. Um, oh, excuse me. I'm a little bit allergic to cats. <laughs> ironically. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm like very much for uh, anthologies. I think they're uh, the best and the most cost-effective way of uh, being able to, to read like one or two poems from every important person or, you know, uh, one or two essays and so on. Uh, re reading the most, uh, the most influential of anything. Uh, often with critical um, explanations and so on. So they're very good learning tools. Um, so in the sense of like, yeah, you could read a novel and just, that would be probably more entertaining. But if you want to develop a foundation, as, uh, as you said, then that's kind of a good way to develop your understanding. And uh, anthologies are pretty expensive. So... Um, it might seem like a waste of money to buy like a hundred dollar anthology uh, compared to buying like five novels or something, right? Five books of poetry. Um, but anthologies are usually like a thousand pages, if not more. Um, and just, yeah, like in terms of value, I, 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 I'm a believer. I've, I had to buy anthologies for, um, for my university classes, but I don't regret uh, that investment. I think that <clears throat> they'll serve you well, and they'll uh, help you build a good uh, understanding of what's going on if you take the time to read through them. Um, and then in terms of specifics, uh, I, I think there's like three kind of categories of anthologies, um, and you should get one of each to start. And again, like you don't have to do uh, all of this, all, all these steps are not in order, um, and you don't have to do all of them, but it's just like, these are my recommendations of things you can do that I think would be very helpful. Um, so in terms of, there's three kinds of anthologies. 
One uh, would be uh, like classics, so like older stuff. Uh, I think Norton has a good collection of like classics anthologies. Um, this one I'm not like uh, super familiar with. I just I, I don't have a, like a dedicated anthology um, for just classics, which would be very hard, obviously, because there's a lot of stuff before the 1900s or whatever. Um, usually anthologies are a bit more um, condensed than that, so this one you can maybe skip. Um, but I really recommend getting a 20th century anthology, so like modern, that would be the modern period. Gracie's going wild. <laughs> Um, but a uh, 20th century anthology, so of like um, influential avant-garde thought, just to, so you can see the progression of, um, because the movements were uh, generally slower um, before that, uh, and they're also more kind of like ancient history, so that you study the stuff from a long time ago um, to understand the, the culture, um, the foundation of our culture and stuff like that. And the really like old original forms, um, and that's it's it's valuable, but it's not super important. But twentieth century, I think it's it's very helpful to be familiar with um, the different things that were going on. Um, and and the anthology I recommend for that is the one that I have, which is Poems for the Millennium. It's in two volumes: one for the first half of the twentieth century, and one for the second half. That's by Jerome R Rothenberg and Pierre Joris. Um, so, and I'll have links to that uh, to that edition uh, in in the description below, um, and and there are affiliate links. But if you don't want to uh, to use those links, you can just Google the name, which will also be there. Um, but that's a really really like fantastic anthology, and Jerome Rothenberg is probably um, one of the best translators of like of German that I've seen. I believe he was translating from German. Um, but anyway, some, so those, the translations in, uh, in that anthology, are, are a lot of them are originals. And they're some of the best translations I've seen for a lot of that stuff. Um, and, and for some of it, they're the only translations that exist. So, um, And that one will have stuff like Dada, uh, Surrealism, and, and so on. Uh, futurism. Um, and the final, the third anthology... Man, how long is this? Oh my god, it's 12 minutes already. <laughs> the first point. Um, the third kind of anthology would be for a critical theory. So not not about um, literature specifically, but well, it's about literature, but it's not about the writing uh, as much as it is about how to understand the writing. That's what critical theory is. Um, so, so stuff like different ways of analyzing literature. Um, it's kind of um, it's helpful both for writers and for readers. I think um, if if you want to go like deeper and, and get like a um, a more solid and and broad um, perspective on on literature, that's like super super helpful. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, and the one I'd recommend for that is uh, the Norton Anthology of Theory and Criticism uh, by Vincent B. Leach. Uh, among others. There's like 10 editors. <laughs> um, but I had to get that one for a critical theory course. And that, that it's like insane. I forget how many pages it is, but I think it's like easily 2,000 pages. And it just has, uh, I, I forget like exactly how far back it goes, but it's uh, about as com as comprehensive as, as you'll, you'll need, uh, unless you're like a PhD student. <laughs> um, Okay, so that's uh, point number one. Uh, the rest of them are a little bit more straightforward. Uh, so for the sake of brevity, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ramble on about them as much. Uh, so the second uh, thing you can do is, um, there's a literary magazine called, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> um, there's a literary magazine called uh, Poetry. It's just called Poetry. Um, that's really uh, famous and their website is like fantastic. Uh, so what you can do is you can go to their website which is poetryfoundation.org uh, and I'll have a link below as well for that. Um, uh, and if you go under poets on that website uh, you can you can explore 
<clears throat> I forget exactly what the button's called, but you can click like explore by school or something like that. And basically it'll like take you to this um, search feature kind of <clears throat> um, that lets you search their entire archive by time period and by Um, <clears throat> well, uh, it'll let you search their entire archive by um, <clears throat> uh, by uh, artistic school, basically. So, like the beat poets and so on. Um, so, what I would recommend doing is looking at what those categories are uh, and researching them a bit, and maybe like clicking through them and, and reading a little bit of the the writing for each each school, familiarizing yourself with what that school is. I believe if you click on it, you can even read like a descriptive text, but they also have like really detailed biographies of all the writers and, and, and so on. Um, so that's really valuable and that's free. So you can, that's one way you can uh, kind of figure out what's going on, um, uh, for poetry at least. Um, so you can learn about those different schools, learn about the key people in them, uh, and you can read them for free uh, on that website uh, and other places online as well. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's one thing. Um, uh, number three is, uh, there's actually a Wikipedia page just called History of Literature, uh, which I'll link below. Um, and uh, as the name implies, it's just a history uh, of literature. So that's super cool. It's pretty short. Each kind of uh, significant thing is maybe a paragraph or two. So I totally, um, totally recommend reading through that. Uh, and then also reading through the main articles for each of the things it talks about. So it's like you read the two paragraphs about romanticism and then you open the main article for romanticism and you can learn more. <clears throat> so that would be very helpful for familiarizing yourself with um, kind of like understanding where different things fall uh, in terms of like the history, uh, that would be really helpful for understanding. Like, okay, this person is writing in the 1850s in America, so on and so on, right? So that'll give you a good free foundation. Um, a, a great book to read is uh, A Glossary of Literary Terms by M. H. Abrams. <clears throat> and it's basically like, uh, well, it's, it's what the name implies as well. It's a glossary of literary terms, so it'll explain like what a meter is, a metaphor, and, and so on, but um, not just really simple things. It's pretty comprehensive, and it's also quite, um, quite accessible, uh, so I highly recommend it um, because that will kind of teach you, both if you're a writer, you'll learn uh, techniques and terms that you might not have known, um, but also as a reader, you know, uh, y it'll help you be able to talk about things uh, <clears throat> with a higher level of competency. So you'll be able to say, <clears throat> like, oh, um, this piece is using X and Y technique, and like to do this and this and so on. Um, You'd be able to talk about like the, the narration, whatever, like it's hard to give a specific example, but hopefully that makes sense um, because uh, to talk about literature uh, and to understand literature to an extent, you have to know what to look for. Um, so the same way, you know, um, like to talk about a painting, to talk about the colors in a painting, you have to know the names of the colors first. And this is kind of the same thing. Um, so that's a great book. Uh, link, in, link in the description. <laughs> um, uh, number five is, oh boy, it, this is so long, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, number five is Read the Western Canon, uh, which is a book by Harold Bloom, who I mentioned uh, in one of my previous videos. Uh, he's a really, really influential critic. Um, and basically all that book is, he, he picks, um, I, I believe, 22 or 23 um, of the most important kind of writers uh, it makes the case for why they're like the most important like representatives essentially um, of the western canon uh, so like the western 
school of literature and kind of like what they say um, about our culture and so on. Maybe I might be misrepresenting it a little bit, um, but I think that would be very valuable as well, um, just because it'll give you a list basically of who one of the most influential critics thinks is important uh, in terms of uh, in terms of reading. Um, and a lot of those names will appear uh, in my list later of like the foundational writers. Um, but you can read it straight from the horse's mouth, so to say. Um, and then also, after you read it, um, he, he's writing kind of from the point of view against a lot of um, the 20th century critical thought. So with your critical theory anthology, you will have familiarized yourself with like Marxist criticism, uh, postmodern criticism, uh, and so on. Semiotics, uh, structuralism, things like that. Um, and you can kind of see where you fall, you know. Uh, you can at least try to contrast his ideas uh, and the ideas he's writing against. Um, and just, yeah, so that's kind of, uh, uh, that would help you understand that, that um, conflict. And I read online that, like, contemporary critical theory has moved on beyond that. I don't know a whole lot about that. Um, but that shouldn't matter for like starting out. So that's a book to check out that I, I think would be helpful. Uh, and the sixth point is very simple. It's just read more and also read more about reading, which hopefully um, is kind of self-explanatory. Um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot more to say about that. That's a little bit of, I know it's kind of like a, <laughs> it's a little bit of a meme answer, but there's there's not really um, any better thing you can do than just to keep reading. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, like the, the first five steps um, should provide some direction and, and provide a bit of uh, uh, more foundation, but the more you read, the 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 stronger and broader that uh, foundation will become. Um, so hopefully that makes sense uh, in terms of this uh, part of your question. Tomorrow will be another video uh, also related to your questions, as I mentioned. Um, and if any of you guys have any other questions, uh, as always, leave them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer them in a future video. Uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see y'all tomorrow.